<laughs> hey, what's up here, guys? We're here at Lake Chatug, a known topwater lake, especially for you. We got the anger of AOY a couple years ago on the Cane Walker. Yeah. But we're here, and the Abu guys set us their dock skipping setup. It's the Shade Lahue rod, right? Lahue? How do you say that? Lahue. Lahue, okay. You got it right. And the super shallow spool, so it's a great setup. But back home, we don't have a lot of docks. I don't have to skip any docks. I, I suck up. I'm kind of scared to embarrass myself even attempting it today. But could you walk us through? how to fish, how to skip a dock, the rod, the reel, the bait, and just the, the technique and everything today? For sure. All right. Happy well, to do it. We got a few docks here. We'll go check them out. Again, don't watch me. Watch this guy. I'll probably be behind the camera so you don't see me just backlashing all day long. But let's get after it and teach these guys how to skip some docks. Sounds good. All right. Before I totally embarrass myself, which I'm, I know I'm going to do, brand new rod and reel. T walk us through, like, your, how, I guess how you di literally dial in the spool tension and the brakes to set me up for I guess possible success. Let's say success, but how, get my rod and reel if you could set up for me. All right. So what? what so are we well, first of all, you got the right reel. This is the super shallow spool. Yeah. Yeah. And this is made pretty much for skipping docks. You know, this is really good for it. So you want it. You're a lefty, right? Yes, so sir. I need to tighten it that Backward, way. Yes, sir, yeah. So I do want to tighten up the spool tension just a little bit, and then I'm also going to turn the brakes on, probably about a quarter of the way. Like, how, but how do you for you maybe all the way? <laughs> <laughs> how do you gauge like like how much well, full touch though? I mean, you drop the. I, I mean, I just want to kind of feel, you know. I, I drop the bait a little bit. We'll keep going backwards there, but yeah, that's about right. So pretty quick, still pretty quick fall. It's still though, pretty yeah. quick. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you tighten it too much, you're you're gonna hinder yourself because the thing when you're skipping docks is you can't be right up at the dock. Yeah, yeah. You still have to be back a little bit. Okay. So it it takes you know, some power when you're casting and you need the reel to be pretty somewhat free to be able to get the bait sure. up. But you crank it all the way down, you're not gonna backlash, but then you're not gonna- Then you're not gonna be able to yeah. make the cast. Then you're, just, you're skipping it to that's right. in front of the dock. Yep. Okay, cool. All right, so that's, we're dialed. Now, what's your angle, what's your approach to when you're getting to a dock? Is yeah, so if we're coming up to a dock like this, you know, I'm I'm thinking as I'm coming up, mm -hmm. all right, we're, what's a good angle? There's three little openings under this dock you know, based on the day, time of year, whatever, are the fish, have they been on the outside, have they been on the inside? And I might focus more, you know, on the inside or outside, depending on that. But this is a pretty good distance right here. Okay. Um, you know, maybe a little bit closer than this, but we're slowly drifting in there. Yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, for me, you know, still, I mess up from time to time. So I'm yeah. not gonna say I'm gonna do it perfect. Yeah. But I always start, you know, and kind of look where I'm gonna go. And then it's a, it's a thought process, man. And if you miss it, just reel it in real quick. You know, that time we hit the float, I would let that sink and go down. My goal is to get some momentum coming. And when I let the bait go, you know, it's it's on a kind of a downward trajectory. Okay. So you hit the water, it, just like you're skipping a rock. Same yeah. idea, you know, you're not throwing a rock up in the air mm -hmm. and expecting it to skip. You gotta throw it down at the water. So, right there, I mean, that's a perfect skip. Yeah, but you're good at it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but it almost looks like, to me, it looks like you're kind of picking your rod tip up after you kind of release. Or probably at the end, you know, but the, but the line's free. So yeah. it doesn't really matter at okay. that point. It's almost like a golf swing, right? Like the follow through just happens, but the impact is, when you're hitting the ball, but I think again, your rod is level to the to the to the. I guess your tip is level to the the water. Or what are you kind of? You know, you're just doing it. I mean, it's probably a little sidearm too. Yeah. You know, honestly, little sidearm, little top to bottom action, and just practice, man. I mean, it. I mean, like it, like, like a casting in general. After you get the skip down, you're you're looking at your target, and your 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 muscle memory will kind of kick in. I think a lot of it's muscle memory. I think a lot of, another thing too is a lot of people think pros just go out there and they don't even ever miss or ever backlash, but that's not the case. Yeah. We all definitely do, you know, and the thing that I would say one of the biggest keys is trying to get the bait furthest away from the boat before the first skip. Okay. If you skip it really close to the boat, you're going to lose your momentum of the bait and you're going to miss the target. Okay. And it's going to skip a lot better if you get that first skip like that was too close really you know yeah. but you get that first skip i would say halfway or maybe even a little bit more than halfway to the distance of what you're trying to get to yeah, that's all they would skip at docks right you're getting bait somewhere where other guys usually don't get the bait typically 
Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're just, you're trying to put it in a spot because largemouth, typically when you're skipping docks, I mean, you will catch spots too, don't get me wrong, but it's generally a largemouth thing and they like being up under that dock. We're getting sun now in the darkest, shadiest part of that dock, mm -hmm. you know, and the only way to get there is to skip up under there. So yeah. that's why a, a wacky rig, you know, is one of my favorite things to yeah. skip. Yeah. It's very easy on a spinning rod, uh, but there's times too when they don't want, you know, they want a bait moving. So you skip up under there and you swim a jig out or, you know, like this Shane Liu, you, you know, he's in North Carolina over at Lake Norman and yeah. a huge thing over there yeah, is skipping skip a jig docks, under yeah. docks. Now, would you say, I mean, it's easier to skip a spinning reel, correct? And run. 100% easier. So yeah. maybe you start out, maybe learn that to get that muscle memory down a little bit. Probably and, helps. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so I'm like, like a total idiot, but yeah, maybe next time we'll start a spinning reel and then go to the casting reel. But there's advantages of having a casting reel and, and, and rod for doing and, this. Well, heavier line, yeah. heavier baits. You're not going to be able to do any, you know, skip a jig on a spinning rod. Yeah. Unless you put on heavy, heavy line and a super heavy yeah. spinning rod, but that yeah, wouldn't see, make and sense. You got all kinds of nasty stuff on these docks, so you want some of the heavier line times. Right? Absolutely. You, you got to get in there, but you got to get them out more yeah. importantly. You want to give it a shot? No, well, before we do that, <laughs> totally again, but I think more importantly, again, you know, the right rod and the right reel. So you got the shallow spool, obviously, is a huge part of it. Yeah. that less, less, less inertia to get it going, so it makes it easier to skip. Um, but the rod itself, what are you looking for? You know, in, in, in general, in a rod, they kind of talk about this rod itself, so. Yeah, you want something that's shorter, you know, uh -huh. not not too long. Seven and a half is a little too long for me. I like, okay. this is a seven one, seven one to seven three. Okay. Somewhere in there is probably about what you want. Like Even a medium a, action, or medium heavy? Medium or? heavy, okay. fast tip. Because, okay. um, you know, you want that rod to load up nice, but mm -hmm. you need backbone in the rod to be able to put a bigger hook you know, through the fish's mouth. So exactly. you don't need a moderate action rod. Yeah, yeah. You need something with a fast tip and some backbone. Yeah. And, that, and that fast tip is probably key to getting, to getting that cast. 100%. Okay. Yeah, no doubt. And then, you know, real, or as far as line, we can talk about that, yeah, 15 yeah. pound. I, I don't like 12. I think 12 is too thin. Okay. And it's going to give you more problems. Okay. And you got to think too, you're always throwing this up in the darkest part of the dock. Yeah, yeah. So they're not, I don't think they can even see the line that great in those dark, shady okay. areas. So. I'm totally fine using 15, even 17 pounds. So take advantage of it so you can get back in there 100%. and get, get them out. And like you said, there's always all kinds of nasty cables or old pilings or whatever under dogs. Logging so. muscles up in the north. Logging muscles, there, whatever. So. so yeah, at least 15 pound. Okay. Uh, and then this reel, you know, this is what we talked about, but this is a super shallow spool. So yeah. I don't know how many yards of 15 it holds. It's not very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's like 60 yards maybe, something okay. like that. But it's a fast reel. And that's okay. one thing you definitely want when, okay. you're, when you're skipping a jig because I'm going to cast it up under there. I'm going to let it hit the bottom. I'm going to work it a couple times with my rod. I'm going to reel in the slack when I pull up you know, my rod, right. when I'm pulling the bait. And then after that, I need to burn it in to make another cast. Okay. So a fast reel is key. Well, it, let's say eight to one. Well, walk so that. Show us again like how you, like again, you mentioned working the rod. So give us a skip and show us how you normally would approach, like I guess, trying to, to work the bait. Okay. So let's say if I was, you know, fishing the inside corners of docks, right? Yes, sir. So I'm going to roll up here. And it's important, like, it's easy to get in a hurry. Okay. But if you start getting in a hurry, you're going to miss a lot more. Than, yeah, yeah. So I like being calm, Set patient. For success. Yeah. I missed right there. So I'm going to reel it in. You better than I do. <laughs> it was a close one. It's not a great skip, but we'll let it go. So I'm going to let it sink to the bottom. Okay. And then it's a fairly deep dock right there. So it's on the bottom. Yeah. Of course, I'm gonna pick it up a couple times. A lot of times with dock fishing, man, they hit it quick. Yeah, yeah. Because they're up there and they follow it down. You don't really have to work it around much. The only time I tend to work the bait around slower, like and take my time is in the winter okay. around docks. Other than that, when they're, when they're a little slower. Though. Right. Other than that, I'm burning it in, okay? And then go into the next one. Hit the float, reel in, don't waste any time. And then when you're back, I mean, if you, if you get that jig way back in, you'll still work it all the way out, or you still give a few options? I like working it to the edge. edge yeah, you know. might as well. Yeah, but, ah, that was a bad, bad one. Well, I said, but I mean, you're going to do that. You can't get frustrated. You're gonna, <laughs> right? I mean, it's going to happen. It's going to happen, especially you're if you're, you're trying to look like you're. Especially but, if you're rusty. Like, I haven't been doing it in a while. So that was way up under there. Yeah. But uh, I haven't done it in a while, and normally in the spring when you start doing it and you're fishing docks all the time, 
you're gonna be a lot more accurate, yeah. you know? So it takes practice, muscle memory, like you said. Yeah. I don't let it go, it hits the bottom. I'm gonna pick it up, feel for anything, nothing, bottom, nothing, nothing. I'm gonna burn it in, Yeah. you know, get it on to the next one. So that's kind of how I do it. I mean, it's not the perfect way, but it works. It works for sure. A couple things I look for in a jig that I'm gonna skip under docks, guys, is a half ounce or three eighths ounce weight. That's pretty much the size you wanna use, either one of those two. A flatter head, something that's gonna skip real well. And with your trailer, you want a bait keeper on the hook so you can thread the trailer up the hook and kind of get it up there and more compact so it'll skip better. I also like a little bit light, lighter wire hook uh, just for better hook set and penetration on those long skips under a dock. So the Berkeley Finesse Jig is a really good one to check out. Again, so I guess I would have given it a try, but maybe we'll do it after the camera's not rolling. We'll see. It's not like a total fool. We got to roll. <laughs> we got to roll. So At least stupid. a blooper. Okay, a few blooper reels. We need to but, go find an old beat up dock though for you. <laughs> so we don't this isn't a nice dock. We're going to get in trouble. <laughs> but I mean, again, dock skipping practice, probably a big part of obviously a huge part of it is doing over repetition. repetition. Yep. Getting the muscle memory, but again, having the right rod and reel to make it happen. And in line as well. So if you guys want to try skipping docks with a casting reel, check out the new Abby Garcia, Shane LeHue dock skipping rod, and the Weibo SX shallow spool SS, correct? SS? Yeah, SX, SS. It's a lot. It is a lot of XX, yeah, it's a lot going on. But of course, all available, tack routes. Hope you guys learned something. Go try it out and let us know how you guys do. See you guys.